Come and spend your autumn years in an Indian palace. This is the day. It's a luxury development where all the residents are in their golden years. Like the coast of Florida. Yeah, but with more elephants. Flight 247 to Delhi is boarding now. Would you like some of this? I believe it's called alu carparata. Now, if I can't pronounce it, I don't want to eat it. Is this your first time in India? Yes. Do you think we'll be all right? It's going to be extraordinary. Man, now we're even outsourcing our old people to India. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the whole premise of the movie. <laughs> it's like, hey, they, it, you know what? In the Western, in the West, they hate old people. So why not just bring them here to India, where there's already eight billion people that they could just get lost in? <laughs> that's true, and spend their retirement money. <laughs> that would have been real hilarious to see them get lost on their rascals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they pretty much they pretty much drive rascals in India, so, right? You know. But uh, but yeah, with the, with the title though, the exotic Marigold Hotel, I was actually really dreading to see this movie because when I when I when I heard the title, I was like, oh man, maybe this will be like an awesome sex romp. And then I, I know I thought that cast, too, <laughs> and it was like the cast of the nursing home. I was like, oh my god, no. I know it's too bad Corey couldn't have seen this. <laughs> He I would know, have he actually would have, liked it yeah, on that he would, have, he would have had an accident in his pants, a happy one. <laughs> well, I, I, I love how, I mean, it seemed like it was like every year, twice a year for a while, like right after the full Monty came out, where like Britain just always had to have like, hey, we got another ensemble, um, you know, a, a comedy. It's, it's a little raunchy, but, it, but it's got a lot of heart. And it's got all the British actors who aren't in Harry Potter movies right now in it. Yeah. <laughs> and... So it seemed like they were they were just pumping them out. It kind of died off for a while. At least maybe we stopped getting them. But mm-hmm. now they're ready to crank the machine up again. Well, it <laughs> felt like there was a period that there was a lot of actually really funny and clever ones coming out that were genuinely humorous. And so even you know while following not being pre- you know unpredictable, mind you, yeah. we're like heartwarming and funny in the right balance. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about that Mr. Bean movie where he plays a detective? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> uh, uh, like Waking Ned Devine sure. is a great sure. example of one that was really good. Or the one where uh, the girl had to, the woman had to grow pot to, to keep her uh, our house. I, I think the name that of by it. that time I was starting to drop off. Oh, those. that's a really funny movie. I like that a lot. It's, it's cute. You yeah, know? Okay. Um, but there's there are several around there. And then, yeah, you're right. They disappeared for a while. Now we're getting them back. And I don't know if I want them back. That's that's the thing. <laughs> Sometimes you, you you grow past these things. Well, <laughs> but I mean, you got to admire, like, much as they say, like, well, you know, in the West they don't like their their old people, but in Brit, man, they love these actors, and they're making sure that they work until the bitter end. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, really, I was like, all right, you know, maybe maybe I'll find something interesting about this. But halfway through, I was really hoping for uh, you know Elvis and Kennedy to start fighting. A <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like, <"Come> on, <laughs> well, that's the problem is that this is it's like. Like almost this film is stars old people and it's designed for old people in the sense that they make sure that nothing exciting is going to happen enough that might cause someone to have a heart murmur or right. something you know because it's really just it's so tame even in like both in its plot i mean there's like one little dramatic moment and they get past it so fast True. So they're like no, no no pay no attention to the dead person yeah. okay so, <laughs> you know? so what's the movie about uh but i was gonna say but like even the humor is like they just went through a bumper sticker catalog as near as oh I can God. tell. Oh my God! And they injected some Slumdog Millionaire. Even in there. the <laughs> jokes are even older than the actors. Thank you. I was I was like, Yo, come on, use your joke because it's actually pretty good. It's actually was, and true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Every joke. They're like, really? Oh my God! Yeah, there was some of them that they set up and 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 knocked down where I was like. Wow, you guys just pull out like a second grade riddle book for that mm-hmm. uh, that joke right there. Yeah, they did. <laughs> well, if you look at those actors, they're like, "Hey, we're not comedians." <laughs> <laughs> you know? What you have is a bunch of people that uh, from around England who don't really they don't know each other except for one married couple before they go on this retreat to India to this very inexpensive sort of retirement hotel. Well, it's not like a retirement they, home, right? They're all in their golden years and yeah. they're all broke. Like they're looking at going into retirement homes or um, what do you call it? It's something village, uh, not not retirement oh, no, village, like, but with, with the grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're at that point where like, wow, we don't really have a lot of money, but here, this this hotel in India is offering us a place to stay, like an old folks community, that's really cheap. And it's called the Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Old people Sounds eat that awesome. shit up. Yes. And you see the brochure. Sex. The place looks like a palace. Yeah. You know, chefs, all, everything you could ever want. down palace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No shit. And they all go like, well, you know what? Let's, let's just go for it. 
These, yeah. this, this disparate set of, of Britishers. You've got <laughs> Judy Dench, who's, <laughs> uh, who's just a, <laughs> freshly a widow, yeah. uh, and she doesn't have enough money to pay off her debts, and she's like, you know what? I this sounds like it could be neat and what the fuck I've never really done anything. She's I'm one of those those wife. women who's like yeah she's always been dependent on her husband and now that he's dead she's kind of like wow what where's my life? You've got Bill Nye and Penelope Wilton who if you remember in Shaun of the Dead Sean's were like parents. the yeah Shaun's parents <laughs> yeah. In, in Shaun of the Dead. Well Bill was his adoptive father or a stepfather. You know, a stepfather yeah. Yes exactly. But they've been married for almost forty years uh, and they lost all their money by investing in their their daughter's startup internet company <laughs> which don't have to tell you guys <laughs> how, how rarely that pays off. They should have just made her sell her ass on the street. Right? <laughs> yeah. say, how come she's not going to India. Yeah. But so they decide, you know, it's better than living in one of these government paid for retirement homes. We're not ready to die. And he's more excited about it than she is. She's yeah. one of those like, well, they don't have Watney's Red Barrel here. This is what yeah. the, they don't do it like they do in London. Sorry, so no parse words. She's a bitch. Yeah, she is a bitch. And he's like, isn't this amazing? Look at this place. It's just so, look at the temples. And it's the, so different. Just throw mm. yourself into it. Make the best of it. Yeah. And she's like, whatever. Fuck you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, you've got uh, Maggie Smith, who is the total fucking racist, who has to go because she doesn't have enough money for a hip re- replacement surgery. Oh, I thought she but... was playing Mel Gibson. Uh, <laughs> really pretty did. much. Yeah. Except she doesn't hate Jews, just anybody with yeah. color. Yeah, 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 anybody with the least bit of melanin. <laughs> and uh, she finds out she can get the surgery really cheap in India, but... Like where she can actually afford it, but she'll have to stay in this hotel while she's doing it. And she has to be around mm-hmm. Indians, and, and, and she can't stand. She can't stand <laughs> Indians, or at least she thinks she can. Yeah, she, you know. Uh, you got Tom Wilkinson as a judge retiring, and it turns out he's gay, and he's kind of there to try and find a lover from forty well forty years beforehand that he now still feels guilt about. Yeah, he's trying to reconnect with his Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, wait a minute, Falcone? Hey, no, <laughs> no, that's not what happened to Batman. Begins. <laughs> and you've got Ronald Pickup as Norman, who's like a guy. He's a pickup artist. He's a pickup artist, except he's too old to do it anymore. Yeah. Who the fuck would want to sleep with that guy? And on the female side of it, you have, I don't know if I'm saying her name right at all, but Celia Imri, who is the, you know, like I said, she's the female equivalent. She's like, she's gotten married a bunch of times. She's still, she's not coming to terms with the fact that she can't just go into a bar and pick up guys the way she right. is to. Uh, you know, and all these people, they have their own little stories that are working out through this. You get a little bit of time with everybody as it goes. There's a few really minor twists with these characters, but nothing you don't see coming from 100 miles away. Yeah. Uh, but I, I found if you most, can see that far. I found, yeah. they can't. Yeah. That's the most ir- irritating, though, is that I thought Deb Battelle's in this, who of course is great. I mean, we all saw him in... Really? Uh, I, I really... I, I was like sitting here going, watching the movie going like, wow... I officially do not like this guy. No, no, no. You didn't like him in, like, a... a, a Slumdog? Slumdog. Sure. It was the first time I saw him, so I accepted him for where he was. Next thing I see him in is The Last Airbender. Yeah. And then this, where I'm like, wow... This guy is a cartoon character. He makes bad decisions. To yeah, be fair. yeah, but but yeah, he, he played he played it a little too. He is hits too. Yeah, broad. He's the too manager too broad, of the yeah. hotel that's barely keeping it afloat, but he's constantly yeah he's playing it too broad like a cartoon character. And yeah. and, and it'd be different if like if the other you know other billion Indians we see around were that way. It'd be like okay, this is a, just a place where everybody acts like that. Mm-hmm. But it's just him. It's almost like. He's almost being like like the Indian equivalent of a Sambo. I was just like, man, <laughs> knock it off. Well, like he was being a Sambo, and he was being like the best advertising this movie could ever have. Would completely like just that his only line consisted of "Hey, welcome to the exotic Marigold Hotel," which he says like twenty goddamn times throughout the whole movie. Oh yes, like, yes, right. I will give you everything you want. It yeah. will be the most splendid thing you have ever seen. It's unbelievable that he actually has the most cliched story of anybody oh, in yeah. this whole film. That is like, why was this even in this movie? It almost feels like they added it in yeah. the movie like it wasn't even in the book originally they, or needed, they needed to bring in the kids Cyrus. Come on. <laughs> it, it is almost like somebody somebody protests and say hey you can have a movie all about india and the indians don't get a story of their own right they're like all right we'll we'll write one Jim in Patel's like knocking on <laughs> yeah. the door hello <laughs> yeah. jumping up so he keeps seeing the top of his head through a window <laughs> i see I, I really want Cal Penn to see this movie so he can give De- Dev Patel a call and go like, hey, bro, n- n- no, no more of that. We're, we're trying to get away from that. And Stop he'll go, it. dude, I got a fucking word. Nobody's calling me, all right? <laughs> Did you not see the last airbender? I'm kind of fucked, all right? Don't, don't be an Uncle Con. Yeah. <laughs> go away. But yeah, you're right. You know, the funny thing is that I was like, yeah, I guess they, you know, now you mentioned that. I was like, yeah, uh, how come they couldn't find anyone else to focus on? I was like, there's this, but I was like, 
they could have easily focused on that one fucking old guy that all he did throughout the entire movie was sit on the stairs and listen to everyone's goddamn shit going on where you know it's like he, he had a little moment to shine but it was like they pulled him out of nowhere it's almost yeah. it, he was almost like the equivalent of uh, ha- Harry's butler and Spider-Man 3 the old guy oh, that right, just right. hanging out in the background that you're like why is that fucking guy just hanging out there? Did he get lost on the set? And then you realize, oh, and then he has like this tremendous dialogue that where he like solves a problem. He's the magical like, Indian who's been he, waiting yeah, for he's his been moment. Waiting. He's just there. He's waiting for the director to go, all right, you, you can do it now. Come Give on. Give your wisdom. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, your lines. Well, like, it wasn't even lines. He just spoke up and he yeah. like, keep filming, keep filming. Yeah, exactly. This stuff is gold. <laughs> What's he actually saying? You don't want to know. I just love it because in every scene, he was like in the background on those steps. Yeah. Just like with his red turn. And just like this is pretty good movie. <laughs> well, and all, but the other main the Indians who actually get dialogue, which like I said, is Deb Patel. Uh, I believe I, I don't know the names of the, the other actresses here, but uh, the woman who plays his his fiance or his girlfriend. Oh, my next wife, who is gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, and then and then uh, Deb Patel's uh, Sonny was his character's name. His mother. They're all playing cliches in Indian culture. I mean, dude, she works at an outsourced call center for Christ's sake. I know. Mm-hmm. You know, and she the mom. Is is that whole like no you will I, you uh, there's an arranged marriage and you will come and work for the and go or you cannot be with this girl she is not from our our clans so you're like come on I'm well, maybe, that, I'm that sure is that not good and, and, no no that, 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 that happens quite a bit I mean that's that wasn't you know it's it's almost like it's stereotypical for movies it's like why does the movies always have to focus on that but yeah. that's quite quite common it's just that, like it, the movie is setting itself up it's setting you up to go like make you as an American go like that's not right you need to stand up to your mother yeah. and it's like. Hey, asshole, this is a whole culture. If it was that easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. Don't, you don't be James T. Kirk and upset the prime directive. <laughs> Let these people do what they do. They've been, they've been doing it no. a lot longer than you. Well, you thinking, who, wrote, who wrote this part? The fucking assholes who wrote Sex in the City? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Trying to change people's culture. If James T. Kirk movie. was there, he would have just taken the girl for himself and left. <laughs> That's true. There, problem solved. No, like, he would have banged the her and then thrown her back into the closet. <laughs> and thrown her as yeah, like, yeah sorry, my, my, my ship is my first love. Yeah. <laughs> but that, yeah, that whole like you know, you, you don't listen to your your parents, your elders. You stand up and and go for what you believe in. Yes, I will do that. And the next scene is him being stoned to death. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what would a exactly. Hindi need with that a starship? Awesome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, uh, but it's funny though that the rest of the film, the way the bits you see of India actually make you want to go there. I uh, thought I disagree. See, I did. I thought it was like the, the way I saw it, kind of the way Bill Nye saw it here. It was like, wow, it's colorful and interesting. I wanted to follow him more on his journeys because they kept having him come back from places. And go, oh my god, it was amazing. I'm like, why didn't we follow him? Why are we listening to all this <laughs> Budget. other bullshit? Budget. <laughs> I, know, I, know. Right. I know you're right about that. Well, every time I looked at, it, I was like, man, that looks like Mexico. But, yeah, I, mean, I know. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah, but the well, thing is, with, with Bill Nye's character, where I, I can always appreciate somebody like that who like sees sees something for more than what it actually is on the surface. But there's times when... Yeah, it. yeah, just, just romanticizing the whole idea. But there's times when a guy like that can get you in a lot of fucking trouble. <laughs> and a guy like that can get you fucking shot. You know, <laughs> a guy like that will end up at the wrong place at the wrong time. I wish we had seen <laughs> yeah. that movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you bring up an interesting point, because, uh, I mean, one of the the biggest problem with this movie is that there's too many characters. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it, it ain't Joss Wheaton handling this. So there's, a, there's a bunch of characters who you just like... I don't give a shit. They're they're just here for comic relief, and this could be taken out so we could focus on the actual interesting stories, the the, the Judy Dench and the Tom Wilkinson, which are Wilkinson pushed pushed so far into the background. Yeah, for but, the but, much less interesting. But like, yeah, but whenever they do focus on them, I'm like, okay, now now we got a, a real movie we're talking about. Yeah, but then it bounces back to the other people. Yeah, you're right. Because the, the, the one thing I kept thinking, like, okay. A movie like this, it's going to show you how you know dirty or how horrible India is, but then eventually win you over. And I never got that point where it won me over. It, it just kept me going like, wow, I mean, I guess I would live there if I had no choice, but uh. kind of... I, I'm not seeing anything that's appealing, but you're right. Bill Nye would go off on those adventures and come back and talk about it. Yeah. And if you could have spent, it could have been balanced easily by spending, you know, just him and his wife, you know, hurt the way she sees things, and you go off with him and see that mm-hmm. that, that that contrast. That would have made a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, that would have worked. There's too many times. There's too many scenes where you know the, the Bill Nye's character wanders off. You know, he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go check out. This is gonna be such a wonderful experience." And then, and then, and then, was like, that your Bill Nye? Yeah. Like, like, he does barely open his mouth. Yeah. And then. <laughs> 
And then he comes back and he's like, oh, this is such a wonderful time. And his wife is there like, you know, you can't help but kind of feel like his wife because you were forced to stay there with his wife. But you're like, yeah, whatever, asshole. I had to hang out with your bitchy ass wife throughout this movie. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, you're not having a fucking great time looking at chicks. Yeah, so, so yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> but... <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, no. This the, the biggest problem was the just just they couldn't really uh, gel this group together to where you know it, it, it felt like a, a different like a bunch of like different episodes. Yeah, uh, and, and because there's there's characters that I actually liked, like the guy the guy who I I, I think is going to end up being Corey at some point. <laughs> <The> guy, <laughs> yeah, or at the end of his storyline, it's like, look. I just do this because I want to be loved, and, but uh, you know, I'm, lo- I'm lonely. No. But I know. is that even in a theory? I know I that's I know. pretty much. We've just glanced into the future. But, but I was so like that guy is so like optimistic. He he's in, he's really trying to enjoy his life, and I, I I was like, wow, the way they introduced him, he was funny. You know, he was yeah. like, he's like he's, he seems like a real interesting character. But then the movie just like kind of says like, all right, we'll deal with you in another like hour. So yeah. No. Is, I thought the only person who was actually funny to me was Bill Nye because mm-hmm. even though his dialogue that was written from him wasn't funny, mm-hmm. come on, he's Bill Nye. He's funny no matter what oh, he does. Oh yeah, no, sure, he's, great. he's great at taking stuff that's mm-hmm. flat and putting character into it. Um, have you tried um, jiggling it about a bit? Yes, I did that. Did you kind of bang it lightly on the desk a few times? Yes, I did that too. Okay. Um, Right. Ah, there you are. Good as new. Really? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you like me to um, not fix that chair? Because I can almost certainly do that. Not... <laughs> I thought Judy Dench seemed like she was going to have an interesting story, and then she never really does. No. All The only purpose she has in this film, because she has no arc, really, at all, no. is yeah. to be the narrator. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I that's kept about scratching it. my head with her. Yeah, yeah. like, like what, what is it? Is she, I was getting ready for her to tell her, tell us her sob story yeah. about how her entire family died or was murdered by the mob or something, and she's, like, <laughs> looking for something. Yeah, but what, and that never happened. Wait, weren't you waiting for that just so you could say, don't tell me your problem? Yes. <laughs> well, the worst, though, was today. Maggie Smith, who they build to be such a villain, and then the movie just goes, all right, we're tired of her being a villain now she's going to be a voice of wisdom yeah. out of nowhere out of it nowhere. just flips yeah. like that on the really unconvincing thing mm. and you're like seriously you just spent half the movie with her fucking doing everything but screaming the n-word at everybody who walked by right and suddenly she's the one giving everybody advice mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah and that was another thing that really like just it didn't make any sense as far as the context of her character about how she was in the beginning i was like well how does this kind of make up for her just being a racist cunt. I mean, it just, it, it, it didn't gel. I was like, well, did, did, maybe Mel Gibson did write that part for her or something. I mean, like, look, you, I can change. You know? Yeah, she took out the part where she admitted that when she was a child, she's raped by a pack of... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pack of basketball, Ed, basketball players. Yeah, what, what were you gonna say? Ed, edit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, but, uh, you know, it's the thing is the, the way it started at first twenty or thirty minutes. I was like, you know what. This is kind of cute, and I'm I'm laughing. I, I like the setup. I, I like these characters. All right, let's you know it's th- this this could be good. But it just came that point. I think it was at the thirty minute mark because I checked check my watch, and it was at that point where it's like, okay, you, it's all set up. Now it's time to do something. Mm-hmm. And that second act is where it just flattens out completely. Yeah, like Flat said, lines. Even the yeah. things they do that are like the what should be the most dramatic moments, they skip over so fast. Is yeah. It, well, we don't want to upset anybody, so you know. <laughs> well, it's it's almost like like everything in it. It's it's all sitcom humor, and it's like it's a collection of yeah. six sitcom plots that were woven together. And even at, at some point, even they were like, well, you know, everybody's seen these already. There's no need to really go into it or develop them. You 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 know what happens. Mm-hmm. It's like wow. Wow, man, if you guys give up on it, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. And we've got a whole crowd there full of like people who look to be about the same age as the people in the film. <laughs> and they are just eating up. They're yeah, laughing. They and like, look, they're so uncomfortable riding in those cabs. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. not funny. <laughs> and is this and based, what it is to them. Is this so. based on a book? Yes, yeah. it is. Okay, yeah, because those those old bastards were in that theater reading their books. I saw about oh, 10 that right? books. Yeah, and I'm just like... 
oh man, is this what it's going to be like when Harry Potter gets you know <laughs> reissued in the theaters like thirty years from now or something? It's like, like everyone with their books, and then they're yeah. like, yeah, okay. But yeah, I was like, I was like, oh okay, because yeah, I was shocked. There was like honestly, when I got there to the theater, there was a huge fucking line, and. For a second, I looked and I thought, "Oh, this is the line for the Avengers." I guess this is they're waiting for the midnight. Wow, it's seven o'clock. And then I looked at the line. I'm like, "The old chicks in this goddamn line." Like, Man, uh, I had no idea the Avengers had that kind of crossover. You know? And that, well, they are, you know, they, they are from the '60s. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. And that is the niche that they're going after. Here. Yeah. It totally is. I mean, it yeah. surely is. I mean, Nicholas Sparks films know who their demographic is yeah. and don't really give a shit if nobody else likes it but that demographic mm-hmm. this is kind of that same thing yeah so this that- is like you don't want to see that Avengers movie with a bunch of supersonic men. Yeah. Come over here. We got something for you. Yeah. And a piece of hard candy when exactly. you come in. Yeah. Good old. You don't want to watch that Avengers, them and their MTV. Yeah, and their, those yeah. kids and whatever. And their A-Trex. The hipping and the hopping and the bipping and the bopping. Exactly. Have a Werther's. Yeah, yeah. No. But, you know, it did, it, did, it did actually make me happy to see all those. Oh, I, I was like, wow, I've never seen this many old people at a theater, like, really anxious to, like, see a movie. Movie, right. You know? So hey, good for them. Good, it's about time. speaking, shouldn't someone have died in that theater while we were watching? It'll happen. <laughs> yeah, we were just in that one. It is. When, yeah, when, when it comes worry. out, there's only one screening. Yeah. So, but yeah. But I mean, I don't know. What did you think about it as far as you want to give your? Rating? I, I mean, I mean, I would just, I would just give it a, a, a rental. I mean, like I said, it was, it was a nice setup, and you know, it's these actors that you love from so many great movies, and it isn't. You know, it's not one of those things where you go like. Oh, I'm so glad they brought these guys back because these are the actors who never stop working. Mm-hmm. They, I, they, they always have something to come out every year. But ultimately, it's just flat. You know, mm-hmm. it it had some potential in the beginning. I don't know how the book reads, but the movie itself is just kind of like, uh, just kind of waiting for it to play through its its little sitcom scenarios and then be over. Mm-hmm. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, the the funny thing is that uh, uh, yeah, it, it was kind of cute in a way that you know these people are getting together. And it's like, you know, these despite how old they are, they're still looking for something. You right. know, they're still looking for whatever it is they're looking for, searching for it together. And uh I was I was really impressed with the uh Tom Wilkinson's story where he was, you know, he was looking for, you know, I don't want to spoil it, but he was looking for somebody that meant a lot to him in right. the past. Um but at the same time I'm like, wow, you know, as much as I'm involved in that storyline, how I really find it like endearing it's so generic, though. It, it plays is. out so generic, especially w- when when it comes to you know to its end. You're just like, oh, you did that. Oh, okay. Well, all right, but whatever. But you know. But other than that, I mean, it it was kind of uh, endearing to some extent. But you're right. It's you, you, I really had to like go out of my way to find something to to you know like about it. Yeah. But so I'm just giving it a rental. I think old people are gonna fucking eat it up. You know. <laughs> yeah. Because so. they. <laughs> Can't chew on tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> exactly. uh, it's and there is nothing really tough here it's, about yeah. this movie. It, it, it'll be better than applesauce for them. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing challenging here. There's nothing original here. I mean, but what you do have is a, a, a pack of really great actors who are making the best they can out of incredibly trite material. Mm-hmm. I mean, that goes for something. I mean, that's certainly enough to give it a rental. But I mean, it's a film that barely has a pulse in more ways than one. <laughs> it's it, it's one that like I I toy with the idea of some old bullshit, but I'm like, man, you can't give these old people some old bullshit because it's harmless. Yeah, ultimately. I mean, it's it harmless really to a fault to the um, point where you're like, you know what? This is so harmless that I'm kind of insulted that you're giving it to yeah, me. Yeah, it's inoffensively offensive. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, it's like if you went to somebody's house. And they're like, look, I, I, you know, people have allergies, so I just wanted to make, I just cook something that everybody can eat, and here's a bowl of oatmeal. Mm-hmm. You're like, well, yeah. I was hoping for more than that. I, all I thought was maybe I can't relate to it because I'm not fucking old. I mean, maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe I'll see this in some. Uh, who, that who that knows? will be funny if 30 years from now we're <laughs> like, reviewing this. What the fuck was that movies thing? like this? We're like. I don't know about these kids today, but this is a real movie. You don't have to have a lot of explosions and yeah. action and funny jokes and green naked bastards. Character development. Up shit. I hope at that point I retire. She wants to thank you for your kindness. I haven't been kind. You are the only one that acknowledges her. I'm not eating that. Create a home for the elderly so wonderful that they will simply refuse to die. Oh! This man is dead. <gasps> Must preserve his dignity. And... <gasps> Did I not off? India, like life itself, I suppose, <laughs> is about what you bring to it. I'm really loving this. <laughs> you all right? I just want a glass of water. 
That was a gin and tonic. Mm. I knew that now. The best exotic Marigold Hotel. You're not worried about the danger of having sex at your age. If she dies, she dies. 